I bid you welcome to Montober. Today I want to talk about Phantom of the Opera 1943 starring Claude Rains. Not the first Phantom film Universal did, but for some reason just the one they stuck on this box set. They didn't stick the Lon Chaney Sr. one in, probably because it's public domain, but the story centers around Claude Anne, who was a violinist at the Paris Opera, who spent his savings trying to get help a woman in the chorus by the name of Chris, Christine, who's from the same province of France as him, who he had fallen in love with. He even spent his money giving her singing lessons. And hold on. He, they're from the, and I hope I'm pronouncing the Bravons port, the Bravons district of France. And anyway, he winds up getting let go of the opera because his hands, he's not able to play the violin as well. He probably has carpal tunnel syndrome, something that now. He would just be sidelined a few months with rehab. But anyway, he gets let go and gets given a season pass. The instructor helping Christine with her singing refuses to help without lessons. And he's trying to sell a concerto. Which brings us to the inciting incident. He goes to where he's trying to sell it in this place buys different works of arts. The guy that runs it's working with a woman on doing etchings. And you can tell this guy doesn't think highly of Claude Dan, and we find out that one of his assistants has been trying to get Claude Dan's work published for years, but this guy doesn't like to publish things by unknown composers. Kind of makes you feel like there's some politicking going on there, like, are the more known composers paying him not to do this? But anyway, as he's finding out, the maestro begins to play his piece, and the desperation in Claude Dan snaps. He gets into a fight with this guy and kills him, and why this act of violence is going on, there's this beautiful piece of music playing to contrast it and it's an incredible scene this the woman throws the acid on his face and he retreats to the sewers so he goes to help christine from behind the scenes with threats and even attempting slash murdering other members of the opera we do get some good humor stationed without with some of the opera officials talking i can't believe after 20 years with us claude dan had the insolence to commit murder 20 after 20 years with the paris opera a man is capable of anything and we even get kind of a funny love triangle between christine antonol who works for the opera and Inspector Dobear that is like some of the banter between Antitol, Antonol and Dobear is funny like they'll go through a door and even though they'll insist you first or you first they their pride and egos won't let the other go first eventually Claude Dan drugs someone at the opera, which lets Christine finish it, and we get a great scene after with accusations and backstage politicking. And then Claude Dan leaves a threat that unless... After killing someone, he leaves a threat that unless Christine... stars, he's gonna kill, so the police decide we can use this as bait... And we get an opera scene, which this is a negative in, to me in the film. The opera scenes are just too dr long and drawn out where he uses a hacksaw to cut the chandelier. And he ultimately kidnaps Christine. 
takes her to his lair. In the film has a satisfying conclusion with a humorous ending where Anton hold on where Anatole and Dobert are both trying to take out Christine but she's busy with her fans at this point and as they go to leave would you care to be seen go to dinner with the police inspector and they decide to go eat and as they're going through the door they still won't let the other one go first Claude Rains makes this movie, as I said in the Invisible Man review, he had this great booming voice, and he brings that back at times when he's talking off in a distance to Christine, only he brings a softness to it, so it's not quite as menacing as the Invisible Man, and the costume he wears with the cape and the hat, it makes this amazing silhouette as you see the shadow glide through the walls. This was a full-color film in 1943, which wasn't as common, and you can tell Universal was milking the color for everything it was worth at the time. It's a very good film, not as good as Dracula or Frankenstein or my favorite Universal monster slash horror film, The Wolfman, but it's extremely solid and comes highly recommended. If you want to see it, you have to buy the box set because even though the individual collections are available on DVD slash Blu-ray, the Phantom only comes in the box set for some reason. I don't give it my highest recommend, but I very strongly recommend this movie. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and tune in on October 19th for The Mummy's Hand. Over and out.